Now then, we've been doing a bit of experimenting and um, this is not a how-to video but it's a discussion and an explanation of what I found out about these lithium drill batteries. This one is 18 volts and it's a Makita one but there's one or two interesting things and uh, what we've been doing is we've been making one good one out of two just like we did with that um, Vax vacuum cleaner which I'll put a link to over there so there we go and anyway there's another interesting thing I want to show you before we get cracked on with this look at this now some of you will probably know what it is others won't it is the backlighting stay from um, an LCD television hopefully you can see that's uh, illuminated yes you can so there's loads of possibilities and there's one two three four five six six uh, LEDs in series and this is run from at the moment a 19 volt computer laptop power supply so there you go you notice there's a couple that are a bit duff uh, so uh, what and I've taken the covers off one there one there and that one has started to work it started to decide it wants to work so there you go um, a relatively free access to LED lighting systems um, it probably run at a higher voltage than that but three sixes and eighteen three volts each so that's about right so that should do with that now we want to get on with the battery stuff so here we go here's one of these batteries and there's four volts screws whatever and these happen to be Torx so where's the torque driver gone there it is so you know la 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 undo them all yeah and normally what happens is the battery stays in the bottom half of the case actually let's do it and normally of course there's loads of muck in the bottom of these so I'll just undo those off camera okay let's just get that out of the way so we lift that off that spring be careful of that that operates this and that just clips in like that and the spring actually sits there unless you're aware of it easy that it just falls off okay so here we have and this is genuine Makita yeah, so then to get these out you just need to do a bit of the just gentle persuasion just to lift them up now be careful because this plastic can lift off the the cells so you just need to ease it up there we go okay now on the Makita ones we've got this insulation here which um, is a bit of a problem if you want to measure the cell voltages now then interesting thing let me just this is a very early Makita battery and this is a later one let's just zoom in As you notice, there are some tabs there, and there, and the other side. So on this charging circuit, this is a balanced charging battery. Now then, all the... Just move over a bit. 
all the batteries that I've been working on recently, they're not. As you can see, there are no links on this other side. There's a wire going to a... What would that be? That'll be neutral. That'll be live. That'll be a live. And I think there's a, a heat sensor, but that's it. So a lot of the modern batteries are not balanced charging. Which means that you can get an imbalance. Yeah, so you can end up with, say for instance, whichever. These are in pairs. So those two are in parallel. And then they're in series with the next two. And then in series with the next two. So we got five pairs that are then in series so what you want is all the same but if you haven't got balanced charging you can and you discharge the battery low then any slight weakness within the battery means that say for instance this cell this gets lower than the rest and next time you over discharge it it gets lower still and then doesn't charge up as far and lower still to the point where it's it's zero or it gets into negative charge where the current is pulled through the cell when you're heavily discharging the battery then the cells worn out does not work anymore okay the balance charging gets rid of that but all the modern cells don't seem to do that i think it's to do with the fact that it's economy of production and they get to sell more batteries. Especially with these super fast chargers, you know. It charges up in 45 minutes. Yeah, it hammers the cells something rotten. Anyway, enough of that rant. Let's have a look at the one that I've just taken out, which is actually it's this one. Voltage wise. Okay, we've got this the multimeter set on DC volts 9.7 okay so that's 1.2 if we go from there to there and this is where the paper is a pain in the neck let's go there nothing one point four so that one's one point four that's one point two that one there three point five you see how imbalanced they are now oh, that's a three point five that paper's being is lying one point four now, that one is connected to there, so let's go on there. That's nothing, and that is 1.2. So, the idea would be to change that one, and then charge them up. Now, an interesting thing, but whilst we're here, let's just have a look at this one. And as you can see, I've replaced those two. That's four. 4.1, 4.1, nearly 4.1, 4.1. So that's what you want, okay? Now, if you have, you're charging this up, there's two things that happen once you've changed the cell. And you're thinking, well, how do you charge it up? Well, you use a bench power supply, okay? And I set my bench power supply. Hang on, I'll just show you it. There's the bench power supply. So it's adjustable for voltage and current. So I set that at 20.5 volts and at 300 milliamps. So it takes a while. And I tested the voltage with the multimeter to make sure it's about 20.5 you don't want to be much less 
so you don't want to be much more but um, and like Big Clive although I don't think it's necessary we have an explosion containment device not really an explosion but you know if something really weird happens at least you're not on a wooden surface yeah the, the main thing happens is when if you short out a lithium cell it gets hot yeah and within 30 seconds it's so hot you can't touch it so there you go so back to this one yeah what I found was because the cells were all over the place there were two things that happened first is you think you've measured them and they're all right and you replace the bad one then you charge it up very slowly and what's happened to me twice is that some of the cells have gone dead close to the end of the charge which is fine because it means they were going to give grief anyway so by charging them up fully to 4.1 4.2 volts if one of them goes dead then it's dead and we're more than happy with that because we can replace it there and then the second thing is you may get a total imbalance where you'll have some cells at 4.2 and other ones at only say 3.6 and what I've done in the past this is a 12 volt indicator bulb I've just put the bulb across the high voltage cell as a slow discharge for about 20 minutes and that just brings the high cell down to a lower voltage so you can continue charging and the lower cells get charged up without overcharging the high cell hopefully that makes a lot of sense I'm not going to do a um, how to do it because it gets fiddly in there yeah, and the camera's in the way and everything like that but I will say that you need to use this thin whatever it is the buzz bars that are seen on these you need to use this because it's quite tight in there and if you start using wire and stuff like that they won't fit back in the case okay so it's um, let me just go through this again identify the dead cell change the dead cells charge it up really slowly with a peak voltage of say 20.5 for an 18 volt battery pack you don't want to go above say 4.2 4.3 volts per cell yeah? and charge it up on a um, limited current yeah uh, so you know it might take eight hours to charge it up but you're not hammering it then um, then then if one of the cells or one pair of the cells goes duff fair enough yeah it will have gone duff anyway so change it again charge it up discharge the high voltage cells if you need to now I'm just going to demonstrate what I do with soldering on the end of a cell this is just the way I do it um, other people may have other ideas okay so I'm using this really big soldering iron and I've had it on switched on for at least quarter of an hour so it is quite hot and I'm using flux this is lead plumber's solder okay now then the the positive end absorbs the heat quite a lot yeah so it's difficult to get it tinned but if I found that if you go like that with it rather than going flat the heat is more intense that's not bad and then you turn it upside down and this end is easier a bit more flux there you go 
and that'll do. So I've just got these odd bits of metal that you can slide in there. And this is a battery that I've actually um, theoretically repaired. Twenty point two. There you go. So let's just put it in the drill and show you. And just check the voltage again. Twenty point one. That'll do. So hopefully that's inspired you and if you've got several of these lithium batteries then you can make one out of two. Takes a while but you know it's a little bit of effort and then you just leave it on the um, bench power supply for eight hours and nothing's going to go bad because it's limited voltage and current. And, and if you get a good one, brilliant. And of course the clue is don't over discharge it. Once the drill starts to slow a bit, stop. It's like with all drill batteries, stop. Yeah. Um, hopefully you found this useful. Catch up with you soon.